I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. This is a 71 Corniche. It has the brake fluid hydraulic system that runs off of the 363 fluid. There are a lot of brake lines in here. Just incredible. So you got the six going to these. Okay, so off the accumulators, they, you have <clears throat> from there, there's a flex hose that comes off of that, a high pressure braided flex hose that comes off of that accumulator, goes to the body, and then that runs over to here. It actually it goes to a T and it runs over here. And then the number two system will T also because it has a, a feed that goes back to that height to control solenoid. So there's high pressure there whenever the number two system is high pressure, plus it feeds its brakes. Uh, I think this is just a fascinating, plus you have a, you wonder what these wires are. These are the brake light switch, which is rebuildable. I really like that about the Rolls-Royce and Bentley. So many things are rebuildable. Wasn't there another type of rat trap that was starting to save fires or something when you parked your car in the grass when it was hot? Uh, that is a screen, a heat screen. And here's the remnants of one. That's not a rat trap. Uh, that is that is a heat screen that <clears throat> on the two models, in other words, the Silver Shadow 2 and the uh, Silver Wraith 2, what they have is a dual catalytic converter. Now, a catalytic converter is uh, it's part of the exhaust system that cleans up the exhaust gases and they get really hot. And if you have a car that has a misfire um, for any reason, the foul plug that, you know, just so many different things, overfueling. Uh, it makes those things get really, really hot. And they put those screens on there because, like you said, so, uh, you could pull off the side of the road in some grass, you know, for whatever reason, walk away from your car and it could catch on fire because that, that, that exhaust system gets so hot, especially the catalytic converters. Now, I worked at Jaguar for a few years and they used to have this 12, the six liter 12 cylinder had split ignition systems. So it had two coils and it, each coil ran six cylinders and sometimes one coil would fail. It was real common on those things. Just the one coil would fail and the car would still run smooth, but really low on power. And I have seen the catalytic converters melt on those things replaced a, a number of those because it just kept dumping fuel in there and some of the cylinders were filing, firing because they split it up obviously not one side one coil on one side the other coil but so much fuel would go through unburned that it would just make that catalytic converter turn into an inferno and i've seen them glowing red before and that's a scary thing and then they smell and i've seen pipes melt uh, so on cars with catalytic converters, when you got a misfire, nowadays we have a check engine light and it tells you it'll stay on and then if it starts flashing and it's flashing, pull your car over and turn it off because it's that serious. Um, it's meant to let you know that something bad is going to happen. So pay attention. A misfire car on a catalytic converter car will cause a lot of serious damage, expensive stuff. And there's there's a number of these Rolls Royces and Bentleys you cannot get catalytic converters for turbo R's, and 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 in California, if you, if you have a bad catalytic converter and you fail smog and you can't get a new one, you cannot register your car. So it's part and it's a parts car from that point on. If the car is leaking there the, with the rat trap, you get it under pressure and pumping it before you put the rat trap back on to make sure there's no more leaking in there for all those you connections. You cannot in fix the leak at these distribution valves. This leak right here, it's easier to see on the Right here, this, this, this little piston, it's spring loaded. There is no seal in that. It's just metal to metal and it's machined so close to tolerance that it holds holds the fluid in there, and these will seep. There won't be a pressure leak. I've never seen these leak under pressure. They just they just seep. Um, and uh, the, the reverse effect of that is that it will seep air in sometimes when the car is set. So that's why these brake systems on these cars should be let out every time you service them, which I recommend at least once a year. Because what happens is when you get air in the system, you get what is called a two-stage pedal. 
And you can also get that if one of your accumulators is bad. So what I mean by a two-stage pedal is, watch your step, is when you hit the brakes and you start to feel resistance, you think you're gonna start getting some braking and you press it a little bit harder and nothing happens and you keep pushing, pushing, all of a sudden it grabs. So there's two stages. You feel like you have brakes, but you don't. And then, then all of a sudden it grabs. So that the air in a system will cause that because you have these split systems. And typically most of the air accumulates, it comes out the back. So for some reason, this, these like to suck air. Um, these are a source for pressure loss too. And that's one thing I ran into once where you would run the car, the accumulator was great, had great gas pressure, the system would build pressure great, but then you turn the car off and you know, 15 minutes later, the light was on and they can bypass in here. So I had a pretty worn one that allowed the high pressure to bleed back in, back into the reservoir. Another source for leak or low, or the number two light coming on too quickly is in the height control. High control system can cause if you've got valves that are set incorrectly, where our valve moved, um, then what happens is when you park the car, that accumulator is still trying to hold it up. It's not adjusted properly. So that holding up gradually bleeds off the pressure. It doesn't, it's not static. It's going to bleed by in the system. But all the connections at the tubing in there is not where it leaks? No, typically the leak is only from these, right there. That's where they leak. They seep. That's what I should clarify. That. They seep. They don't leak. What was the original consideration for fluid loss on these vehicles? That's an engineer question. Um, there, I the evaporation. You know, it really depends on so many things: you know, climate, how much you drive it. One other source of a leak that you can't see is through the brake pump. There is a machine fit piston. This bottom of this piston, this, this shaft here is a, it goes up inside and that's what pumps the fluid. And that's also a machine fit, just like these. So there is the potential of fluid leaking by here and into the engine crankcase. And I've seen that a couple of times and the car, the engine oil was overfilled and you pull the dipstick out and you grabbed it and it was kind of sticky, it wasn't normal. So that brake fluid getting in there. Uh, Ronnie, uh, since those are machine fit units uh, with no seals, I assume they have to be replaced and you can't rebuild them? Well, you can rebuild them, but they, they don't. First of all, you can't find these distribution valves anymore nobody's supplying them anymore at least in the last year or so so yes you can replace them with a used one i have had people i've tried in the past to find ones that didn't leak as much uh, but no, yeah, you just, so yes in the case alan if you've got one that won't hold pressure you have to find either a good used one or a new one if you can but it does have to be replaced because they're machine fit and no amount of polishing or anything else is, is, is only going to aggravate the problem, to be honest with you. So, I've seen, the, if you look at this one, this one's stuck. It's stuck in. This one's still spring-loaded. See how it comes out? So this, you know you have stuck. With, I've seen cars like this before where they, the car sits forever and somebody moves it, tries to move it, and the brakes just all lock up. And that's because this is applying brake pressure all the time. There's a lot of reasons for the brakes to lock up on these cars. Something as simple as a brake line, let's just say this brake line right here, right, got smashed, dropped the wheel on it or whatever, that will act as a check valve because under high pressure, it'll go by that little squash part. The high pressure will overcome it. But when you take off the brakes, it's the low pressure, the return will not overcome that. So it just keeps building pressure. So that can happen on steel lines, that can happen on the rubber hoses. The inside of the rubber hoses can deteriorate with time. Those are supposed to be done every 12 years, according to the manual. Uh, 
they will deteriorate and become just like an old man's arteries, really constricted. And all it takes is a little bit to constrict it. I've seen them swollen on the inside. Uh, bits of rubber, I've seen G valves. There's a rubber seal actually inside this G valve that can come apart and it'll go into that line. So every time you hit the brakes, it's gonna allow the high pressure fluid by to the rear brakes. But when you take your foot off the brake, the low pressure will not come back. So it can't relieve. So I've seen wheels smoke. These, these calipers on the front of this thing um, were solid almost. The longer you drove it, the more the brakes were on. And what I found was inside the calipers, these pistons, there's pistons in there, were just rusted. And that's the difference of issues with calipers on the different models between mineral oil cars and brake fluid cars. The most common thing on brake fluid cars is corrosion. The most common thing on mineral oil cars is leaking. A mineral oil car, I believe these are, this one's off the mineral oil. You can see there's a, like a residue over here. And what'll happen is they'll get, they'll start leaking around the seals in there. The mineral oil, for some reason, they leak. But the thing about the mineral oil is it doesn't attract moisture so it doesn't corrode. It actually protects the metal against corrosion. Whereas a brake fluid, it attracts moisture and causes rust. So that's why these the, the calipers, uh, almost the only calipers I ever do on shadows are, are seized ones. And the only calipers I do on mineral oil cars are leaking ones. <laughs> Pretty easy to, to see why too. So. All right, I guess we'll close it up. Thanks everyone for joining us. Good job. Thanks, everybody. Ronnie, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. everybody.